What's up guys, it's Emperor Luku with another tips, tricks, and strategy videos for all your strategy game needs. And today I'm here to talk about Norska. Uh, they are probably some of the easiest factions to play as, um, simply for some of the things that they can do. And I'm going to show you that in just a minute. Don't forget to like, share, and definitely please subscribe. Um, number one, monster hunts are fun. And don't let anybody tell you differently, okay? These are great. They're fun. I don't know... I've seen some people complain about them. Um, I haven't really had any issues with them. Um, I think they're great. I think they uh, make Norska some of the funnest to play as just for that simple fact. But don't start them when you first start the game because you're going to want to build up and you're going to want to do some other things first. But when you get some breathing room, you got some extra stacks, go on the monster, monster uh, hunts. Okay, number one, if you're playing as Wolfric... Okay, if your back's against the wall, you can just spam Mammoths. That's really it. You can literally just spam Mammoths. This is the start. This is where you will start if you are Wolfric. I'll show you where you start when you're a Throg. Um, if you're a Throg, Trolls are your infantry. Um, and you can use quite a bit of them because his research, his, his abilities, and all that stuff like that. I mean, your researches are the same. But with Wolfric, you're going to want to go down a different path than if you're Throg. Um... Complement your trolls if you're Throg, and um, Wolf Wolfric, you know, obviously just Marauders and, and Mammoths, but lots and lots of Mammoths. Now, when you're Throg and you're, you know, making trolls your infantry, don't forget the Mammoths. Still get the Mammoths. Um, but it really comes down to the fact that Wolfric is just 10 times better than Throg, and that's just a fact. Um, Throg has some things that are great about him. I like that, but I think that they could have done better when making a troll leader, um, and they really didn't. So the one thing you need to know about the Norskin mechanics is the simple fact that you can confederate all of Norska in a very short period of time. And all you have to do is do what I like to call Lord Hunting. Get your first stack going, you know, build this up a little bit, get your first stack going and go out there and just hunt down the lords. That's right. Obviously, aim for these douchebags first because you start off at war with them. But, um, yeah, lord hunt. You find their lord roaming around. You fight him. You beat him. And then what happens is you can go straight into the diplomatic settings. Shut up. You go right into the diplomatic um, area. And they'll ask for a peace treaty. Don't do anything with any... Don't. There's no even point in doing this because if, if you open this up and you see military access trading, you're like, oh, that's great. I want that. No, it doesn't matter because you're going to confederate them in literally five, six turns. Um, but I'm at war with the scaling right now. If I defeated his lord on battle, I, I could go straight here, go right here, go right here, go right here, and this will be green. Automatic green. Click on it. They'll accept it. And at the bottom, join confederation will be green. And that's it. You just beat their lord in battle. Bam. And then what I like to do, because everybody knows when you confederate, and in a video, which will be in the link description below, don't forget to subscribe on your way down, I've covered what to do right after confederating to make those, um, instead of getting rid of lords, and, and to make that negative income work for you. Um, and with Norska, I do it a little more, because now I use that lord to lord hunt. And even if they get wiped out, it doesn't matter. I've weakened that lord. And I got rid of that stack at the same time. So it kind of works out for me. Um, choose your god carefully. I'm not going to be here to tell you which god to go for. Uh, because everybody's different. Everybody has a different opinion. And I, you know, I personally, um, I like the hound. Um, especially when I'm, you know, playing as the Norskins. Because just the bonuses you get. It, it makes your your troops just so op um another thing don't um under don't uh underestimate the javelins okay the jab the marauder hunters are they're beasts i mean you go against any other faction especially because you got the dark elves just like right around the corner and they got all these beasts those javelins they rip through beasts. They tear beasts apart. And when you go on the monster hunts, honestly, you could spam javelins and win the monster hunts. Maybe not on legendary. On hard, you can. On legendary, no, you're going to want to have some mammoths of your own. But for the majority of those monster hunts, you literally could just spam javelins. 
Um, and that's the truth. I'm going to switch over and show you Throg's um, starting position really quick and continue uh, with my tips and tricks with these guys. Okay, so this is the starting position of Throg. And I think with Warhammer 2, it's actually easier. And a lot of people might not understand what I mean. In Warhammer 1, you have these dwarves here, right? I'm going to circle them with the red. You have these dwarves here, and they're really annoying. But as you can see in Warhammer 2, you also have these rats. And they tend to go at it immediately, weakening the dwarves and allowing you to take advantage of the situation here and reclaim this area. Um, but you can let them go to war, and it's easier to go off and lord hunt with Throg now. Beforehand, it was like, ugh, if I try to run off and lord hunt, I have these pesky dwarves coming over here messing with my territory and I gotta constantly defend it but now you could just go off and lord hunt let them fight for a little bit I mean they might still mess with you a little bit but you know whatever you go off you get these guys first you can come back and get these guys next um, and do it like that now again um, Throg has the ability to knock down walls during sieges and that's great but other than that, I, I find him very just underperforming as a as a troll. I just feel like he should just be so much more of a beast in battles and be able to take on lords so much easier. But there's some lords that really, I feel like, shouldn't be able to, but give him a good run for his money. And as you can see here, um, physical resistance for his trolls and the upkeep for the trolls. And for Wolfric, you're going to have... Um, a similar aspect, only it's going to go towards mammoths and marauders. Now, late game, not as much with um, this guy here, um, Throg, because uh, Wintertooth, because he, him and his faction, with the ability to give this bonus to the trolls, I kind of use them as my infantry. But with Wolfric, you know, even with the bonuses and benefits i kind of still try to get rid of marauders i don't really like the marauders i already kind of talk about that with the chaos um so i honestly like a lot of people just stop at berserkers and berserkers are good but i had a lot of really good um luck with the champions i think you know getting champion units is the thing to do later on um but in my first video which will be down in the description below and on your way down subscribe um you'll see that i talk a lot about comparing units and how to compare units even in the um build uh recruitment tab um and other than that i mean you can confederate all of this like in almost less than 20 turns probably if you move quick enough probably even less than 15 turns um depending on where they're roaming because sometimes you'll have a lord like oh, all the way over here doing stuff with the dark elves and stuff like that and you got to chase them down a little bit but you can confederate in like less than 20 turns you can spam their doom stacks or crazy whatever if you're modding it's going to be 10 times even easier they're both really powerful lords um and after that i mean who are your closest enemies you've got you know You've got just a bunch of weak humans, you know, here and here, nobody that powerful. And you can wipe all of them out almost instantaneously. You know what I mean? You just... And um, the same aspects that I go with Chaos, I will say, again, raid carefully. If you don't know what I mean by that, talk about that in my video in the description below. And I do the same thing that I do with Chaos. I like to sack the settlement first, wait then destroy the settlement and get the most amount of money. And I kind of treat them like I treat the chaos. I don't worry about if I'm in the negative. With the Norskins, um, you can get positive income easier than you can with chaos. Chaos, you're supposed to be in the negative. With the Norskins, you can be in the positive. But I don't worry about it anyways because if you're doing what you're supposed to, you're going to get tons of money from just wrecking people. Okay? And and that's pretty much it. Like, you, do, there's really not that much strategy involved with the Norskins. There isn't. When you go, when you get down up in here and you're fighting the uh, the Wood Elves, if they're not already destroyed, that can be pesky because their archers will tear your ma m mammoths apart. And you got to kind of chase them down. You got to try to just go right at them immediately. Um, yes, if you actually play the battle. But you could probably, like, at that point, you'll probably be able to easily just, 
you know, auto resolve. Um, but I mean, the Wood Elves uh, are just ridiculous. I mean, their Shadow Warriors and stuff are, j are just ridiculous to begin with. Um, but that's pretty much it. Um, there's not much strategy to them. Their research isn't that much different. Go with what complements the Lord and the Lord faction abilities, and you're all set. Um, okay, and as you can see, I hopped over to the Warhammer 1 map. Um, these are all the positions on the Warhammer 1 map you can take. So if you're playing Warhammer 1, this is what it will be look this is pretty much what it will look like. Um, you can't just take any place you want like in Warhammer 2. Uh, this was Throg. I'll show you their composition really quick. See, I got a, uh, you know, a lot of champions, javelins, screwed around with different things and this was just a screw around. Uh, bam. Spam champions, some some uh, javelins, a couple ice wolves to chase down, and that's pretty much it. Um, with uh, Throg, this was a little bit different. As you can see, I have a lot more trolls, but uh, I really just screwed around in this. I didn't take too much too seriously. As you can see, there's lots of trolls in this army, too. Um, and that's that's pretty much the only difference in Warhammer 1 and 2 is you can't just take anything you want. So, other than that, everything is legit just the same. Um, I didn't think I really needed to make this because I don't really know many people having issues with um, Norska. But I want to do every Lord and every faction anyways. So I figured I'd just get this out of the way. I hope you guys really enjoy this video anyways. I hope you guys subscribe and watch it anyways just to help me out. Um, and I can continue making videos, you know, easier that way. Um, and I hope you guys really enjoy playing as Norskins. And that's all.